All right, hello and welcome back to another 5K Tennis Discussion. Uh, today is Friday, November the 8th, 2019. And yes, once again, I'm doing another solo show. Solo show. I gotta do it. Uh, and again, if, if you don't follow this channel, you're new to it. Um, uh, normally, I'm out on the courts with Carla or helping her with our five kids. Uh, and then we do this show uh, together. Uh, however, with my injury, uh, again, uh, I, I tore up the knee. Uh, pretty badly and, and ruptured my patellar tendon and also fractured my wrist. So she has been um, definitely soldiering up and, and handling all of our tennis lessons, uh, handling the kids and so forth. Um, uh, and, and, and it was kind of, uh, we decided that maybe I would try to do a couple of shows just to kind of keep them going. And plus it helps my mind out, given that I'm stuck right here uh, and have been stuck right here for a while now. So Real quickly, I'm going to jump right into this and, and hopefully make this a quick one, but um, if you follow this channel, you know I don't particularly care for the next-gen anything, the next-gen finals, uh, which is going on now, or players being considered next-gen and all this stuff. Uh, again, when I grew up, it was, you know, you're, you're a top player in the world, or top 10, or top 20, and, and then if you're not, you're just not. Uh, I mean, some of my favorite players as, as a kid were... The likes of Michael Chang um, won the French Open serving underhanded. Uh, um, and I think he, what did he beat? Yvonne Lindell in the semis that year. And then I forgot who he beat in, in the final. Uh, maybe I have that wrong. Um, the, the Tracy Austins, the Jennifer Capriottis, uh, G Wiz, the list goes on. Uh, the young Boris Beckers. Uh, I get that now in today's age uh, or today's tennis that you have Federer, Nadal, Djokovic. At one point, Murray was kind of in the mix there and Wawrinka and Del Potro. Uh, and no one else could really crack into that. Um, so they had to come up with they, me meaning the powers to be, the money grabbers, the the one, the tournament organizers, uh, the ATPs and the, and the ITFs and the USTAs and blah, 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 blah. They had to come up with something. Um, so there's newer faces and fresher faces in the game to keep everybody, you know, still spending dollars on unimportant stuff, uh, because of, of the big three, in my opinion. Um, but let's forget all that. I've talked about it a million times. Um, I'm blue in the face already because I've talked about it on so many shows before, but I want to look right at the next gen finals that's going on now only because I've been watching it. Uh, yes, I wouldn't normally be watching it. Uh, but I, I, I've been basically locked up in this um, little area uh, because of my injury. Um, and, and, and I found myself to open-mindedly watch this next-gen final. The, as this next-gen final started, I told myself looking at the round-robin format and the draws or the, four, or the groupings right off the get-go that the best four players were Tiafo, um, 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 Dimunar, um, Kekmanovic. Um, and, um, blah, 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 blah. was it Humbert that I threw out there? I think it was Humbert that I threw out there because, um, some of the others I hadn't, I had not heard of. A uh, Skinner, um, throughout this week though, I'm glad I was able to be able to watch this because I did see, um, a fresh face that yes, we did see this past year on tour. We did see, especially the latter part of it, which is this young kid, Janik or Janik Center from, from Italy. Homeboy can play. Yes, I do know he lost to Humbert last night. I understand that. Uh, let's remind ourselves that in this next-gen format that it is the first of four games. Um, deciding point, meaning uh, no ad scoring. Um, and, and again, I'm not using that as an excuse of why Humbert lost. I just know that Humbert's played a little bit longer. Not by much, but played a little bit longer. And, and I figured experience would pay off. But, but watching... Uh, two days ago, uh, this kid Skinner played, and I forget exactly who he was playing in that match, but the way he was putting together points, the way he was dictating points, the way he was putting together serve plus one, in other words, serve it in, I get the return I'm looking for, and then it's over, I'm delivering the goods, he was doing that um, with relative ease. Um, too bad for him, though, if he would have won the match today against Umbert and gone into the semifinals undefeated in the next-gen format, he could have picked up a couple extra hundred thousand if he would have finished the tournament undefeated as well. So I thought that was a pretty interesting caveat uh, with this next-gen type uh, tournament at the end of the year or grouping. I do think that uh, what would be beneficial to um, every player out there 
uh, that's outside of, say, the top 10 in the world, as we all know, players outside of the top 10 in the world generally don't make much money at all and can't even afford the hotel rooms or coaches or the food or the lodging or whatever else is needed to travel. That's right. I literally, unless you pick up a big sponsor contract or some type of other big sponsor ship, in other words, where there's more money coming in or your parents got super deep pockets, even being from 11 in the world beyond uh, still trying to make it on the tennis tour is darn near impossible. Uh, so what I would like to see is that because all the all the players' levels are, are pretty close to one another in this next-gen type final, besides before the tournament started, I thought be, besides between Tiafo and Minar, I think it's kind of next-gen cheesy that Tiafo, who's been on tour a while on the pro on the regular pro tour, like the rest of these guys, I get it. So maybe my thoughts are getting twisted. But for me, if you're playing in the next gen, you're like you know some hopeless dude that's just lucky to have some exposure, and you're and you're welcoming you're welcoming that exposure. Tiafo's been on the biggest stage at the, at the highest levels for a while, so it seems like a regression. So for me to be Tiafo um, and lost, I think today to D, D minor relatively easy would be deflating to me, even though it's deflating in a sense the same way that Tiafo is there, that D minor is there in the same um, light, because both of these guys have been playing uh, for a good a good bit of time now, a year and a half, two years, I think, maybe even two and a, and a half, a time runs together, but we've been watching D minor and Tiafo play for a while, so I think the most shocking thing is, is who beats those guys that are there, and then, and then as well, Kekmanovic, so Kekmanovic, the Serbian player, a lights out player, I'm not shocked that he lost to Skinner today at the next gen. Again, it's four games. People can run off four games and they don't have an opportunity to come back. Whereas in normal tennis, you know, you someone gets down 4-0 and they can come back and win the set 6-4. I'm an expert at it. Slow starter, whatever. Um, but but for me, for Tiafo um, to 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 be there and then to lose or to D minor to be there and then uh, to lose, which he, he did and he won, it's, it's, it's quite... Uh, odd for me. I think D minor should have had Tiafo in the other semi, but 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 then again, hey, let's look at it. Tiafo lost a I forget who in round robin format where D minor hasn't lost a match. So I, I I'm not going to be shocked if D minor doesn't win this next gen thing without a loss. But shouldn't we be? I mean, I, I get it. He's got Skinner on the other side. I, I I get it, and I don't even know if I wrote down um, the, the 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 semifinals coming up. Um, but I think it's, I think it's, um, uh, I, I forget someone, someone write it below. Uh, but I, I do know that D minor is going to face someone tomorrow, but, but with the two favorites, because they've been around one of them already gone, I would assume that D minor would win the tournament tomorrow, but, uh, Skinner looks great or center center looks great. I'm thinking of the psychologist BF Skinner. He like did like the Punnett squares or operant conditioning or something. But Dean Mornor should win this, and he should win the extra... Uh, I think if someone goes to the next-gen finals without losing a match, they get like an extra $200,000 or something. That's great. But I think Dean Mornor has probably gotten a, a couple million on tour already, having been in the regular tournaments and the regular schemes of things. So why don't we just pull challengers out of a hat or pull uh, college students out of a hat or pull someone 546 in the world out of a hat and put them in there with some sense of like playing the lottery, like maybe if I win this, I'll have enough money to actually travel on tour in the future because uh, otherwise without it, I'm going to play challengers and it's going to cost me all this money and I'm going to win really nothing and I'll probably get hurt on the way and uh, I might get a fight with my girlfriend and then she'll probably leave me because I'm so broke because I'm still playing challengers. Speaking of challengers, did anybody see these two girls get into a fight or, or, or a shoving match after um, the handshake? Um, and I think it was in Las Vegas. The two players were... Catherine Sabov or Sibov, I don't know how you pronounce that, um, and Alicia or Alicia Parks. Uh, so I, I saw this, and two girls are coming up to the net. Uh, they shake hands after the match, uh, and then all of a sudden it leads into like some near fist fight deal. So I thought to myself, well, where is the sportsmanship on this nightmare? Because it really was kind of a stinky situation that I saw. Uh, and I have to give a but here, but. I say but. Um... Uh, I listened to this minute and a half video that culminates um, with some really just awful display of sportsmanship. But if you look at the, how the match finished, so so the this girl Alicia Parks 
I think if I remember correctly, it was bageled in the first set. So this girl, Alicia Parks, is playing Catherine Sibov, and Alicia Parks, I think, was bageled, lo- love six in the first set, okay? Uh, pretty tough to get bageled by anyone. If I get bageled, I'm upset. I don't care. Let's be real. Bagel me, what's up? Ready, go. Bagel me? Come on, I'm going to get my game. Type deal. Just saying. Bagels hurt, okay? So the second set, as, as I'm seeing, and I didn't see the first set at all. I just saw the last point of the match, and I noticed that in the second set, match point was at 6-6 tiebreaker. However, the girl Sabove was winning the tiebreaker 6-0. So put this into context. The girl Sabove, Catherine Sabove, was up 6-0, okay, in the first set. Bagel, like a, that's a nasty score. And then she was in a tiebreaker 6-6, so a respectable second set, the tie, However, the girl Sabo was up 6-0. So in other words, had six match points, or five, whatever, uh, to win the match. So she wins the match on her first match point. So in other words, she wins the tiebreaker 7-0. And then commences to go, come on! Let's go! So good job, Sabo. You won the match 6-0, 7-6 with 7-0 in the tiebreaker. And you found the sportsmanship to find yourself the ability to scream, let's go with this girl that you just basically just annihilated. Yeah, it was a 7-6 second set, but you were up six match points in the tiebreaker, and you still said, come on, let's go, you look like a schmuck. Now, furthermore, the girl, though, parks, throws a racket and disgusts at losing, and then approaches the net. So you got so you got the girl on the other side that bageled uh, Parks in the first set. Yeah, I'm mad if I'm Parks. Second set, it's 6-6. Six, six. Okay, I'm back in this, only to get down 6-love in the tiebreaker. And then you lose that first match point, so you lose the tiebreaker 7-0. So you lost the match, love 6-7, six, six, and love 7 in the tiebreaker. She threw a racket. Okay, we could have done without the racket toss, because I hate racket tossers. And then I guess these two meet at the net, and they, they extend hands to shake hands, like, hey, how are you? And like, hey, how are you? Like, they're supposed to be cordial anyway after that. She just said, come on and scream. She just threw a racket. Now they're supposed to just, like, kiss at the net. I get it. You're supposed to. It's part of the game. But they shook. And supposedly the girl Sabov, like, grabbed and, like, just amputated her hand in one squeeze. I'm just kidding. Her hand was still there and all was good. And next thing you know, like, a shoving match. And Dad starts screaming obscenities about historical things that are irrelevant to the tennis court, but could be, in a sense, in terms of the person that squeezed the girl's hands mindset actually was at the point in time the dad's mind was. If so, wow. All I know is, man, this game is about being um, a gladiator when we walk on the court, and then, hey, we respect the outcome, and then we walk off the court. When I was a kid, we walked off the court with the opponent that we just played, whether you won or lost. So that means, yes, if, if, if I'm playing you and you just beat me 6-0, 6-0, I come and shake your hand at the end of the match, uh, I'm supposed to, in essence, wait for you to get your gear, whatever, and we walk off the court together. Matter of fact, when I was about a 10- or 11-year-old junior, and I was a junior player, and I was with my dad at tennis courts, whether I won the tournament or lost the tournament, didn't matter. If I didn't walk off the court with my opponent, it'd be heck to pay when I got back in the car, and it wouldn't be fun. So when I see people fighting on the way off the court, I say, oh, wait a minute. How did we get to this spot in the first place? And let's try to de-escalate the situation because both girls made themselves look pretty stupid. Dad kind of did too. I get where all that comes from. I do, I do, I do. But wow, push the envelope too far on that one. Uh, Back to the next gen thing. Uh, Tiafo from the very get-go looked lost in his match today. He looked like... Uh, he didn't want to be on the court. He looked aggravated. Um, he was playing uh, D minor, if I remember correctly, and D minor like broke him to go up two one in the very first of uh, five, three out of five sets of four games. Cheesiness, I get it. But as soon as that happened, it looked Tiafo was all like, looked like he was just trying to go find a shade tree to go lay up underneath or something, like pass him a margarita or something, because he left right then and there. And by the way, does anyone uh, notice that when they do the um, uh, sideline coaching, um, especially at this event with the headphones. Yesterday I was talking about, yeah, I think it's kind of cool how they do the headphones because at least you don't have some bozo walking down on the court at your knees kneeling down like a servant. And I got some camera shrammed up the coach's nose and looking up at some young girl and they're just bickering like Sabalenka and her coach did not terribly long ago that stunk up the whole spot in the first place. So I, now I figured it would be a little bit more I guess, less invasive of my mindset to have to watch coaching on the sidelines in the first place, but maybe because they did it with headphones, maybe it was less cheesy. 
But then I realized when they put the headphones on, we have to watch some DJ spinning music on the side of a tennis court. Like, I really care about that. Further that by listening to some coach that has no clue of what they are talking about. If anyone watched the next gen finals in the past couple of days, can you honestly tell me that any of the coaches in the players' boxes that magically appeared in a split screen, ch- ch- like some video game things like my four-year-old watches, and I tell him to turn that junk off. So I got a player sitting on the sidelines, and I got a, a little screen of a coach sitting up here. And like this player is asking this coach one thing, but this coach can't even speak English, but it seems like he's being made to speak English by the powers to be. Like, hey, buddy, you're going to be on national TV, on the tennis channel. Use whatever English you got and at least sound like you have an accent so you can sound like you can coach. Because here in America, if you have an accent, then you're a better coach than a better coach that doesn't have an accent. So that's the deal. If, I, if I'm if i coaching in the United States and I sound like I'm from like London or something, then I've got a shoe-in job. No worries how bad I suck as a coach or not. Accent sells here. But uh, if, 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 if you are on the next gen type thing, I think they follow suit with that if you're up here in the box. Because, man, there was some coach, and I think it was uh, Um Barrett's coach. Matter of fact, I, I'm pretty sure it was Um Barrett's coach. And so Um Barrett's coach is up here in the corner, and like you can see his eyes are like searching for English words, and he should be like speaking another language, like French or something. So he's like, oh, well, um, you can um, play good, and you uh, play harder. And then Humbert's like laughing at him. He's like showing him, he's like laughing. I was like, dude, what are you trying to tell me? Just whatever. It was such a joke. And then let's further that to Tiafo uh, when he got broken earlier on uh, today against D Minor. And Tiafo's coming over there and he's trying to ask him a question. And this dude's so worried about up here being on camera or something. He's like, well, yeah, you know. And he's trying to work the accent, but he doesn't really know what he's talking about as a coach. So he's trying to sound like he's from elsewhere. Uh, and he probably is, but he used that to try to offset his, like, totally ridiculous coaching. If I was him, I would have been like, stop being so jerky on the forehand. Uh, stop being so self-involved. Uh, uh, don't worry about the Washington Wizards jersey as you warm up. Uh, just go back to the drawing board. Don't need any more of that. You know, he, he just, like, he was trying to buy into something... Tiafo's coach looks like an idiot. It, it just did. He, it, the, the guy looked like a recreational player that met Tiafo. They had a couple of beers at the local bar, and they just like, yo, I'm your coach. Yo, I'm your boy, and let's let's roll. It's just not going to work, Tiafo. It's just not. It's just it's, it's, it's just not. Just not. Okay? Just not going to work. Your coach sounded like, no offense, I don't know his coach, but dude, homeboy sounded like he had no idea what he was talking about. So I think if you put Um Barrett's coach and Tiafo's coach and, and, and out of the next-gen highlights and morph them together and hit play, like one long video of just those two talking to the players on the sideline, you'd want to throw up in your shoe and then wear that shoe to go practice in because it sounded like just idiocracy. Um, uh, 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 and I wrote here, you know, Tiafo was even defensive to his coach. Hun Barrett was, like, laughing because he didn't know what he was saying. Um... Anyway, um, what was I going to write here? I think I already talked like all, about all this. Um, oh, I wrote here, I didn't watch the Kekmanovic and um, um, a center match. I was showing my oldest son how to string uh, his tennis rack as usually I string them. I can't put weight on my right leg, so I couldn't string his rackets. He was down two. And he has a tournament, not this weekend, but next weekend. And then Carla's younger brother, Jonathan, who's a, a great tennis player, is coming to visit tomorrow. So he was like down to one racket and he wanted to play him in a match. So I figured I'd have to at least show someone how to string a tennis racket. So I didn't watch the Kikmanovic center match. I do know that center won, um, which was a, kind of a shock to me. Again, I, I mentioned that I thought Kekmanovic was one of the top four players in this next gen thing, even though he's been around for a year or two already. Uh, but after having seen the, the next-gen finals the, and through its entirety, less that match, because of sitting here, I thought um, that, that center had a pretty, pretty good chance. I do think Minar will win the, the tournament and should. And if not, then we've seen a beginning of the rise with center uh, because he's a pretty good darn player. Um, uh, so I, mean, I guess and uh, it, it, that's it basically in a nutshell. Um, uh, and by the way, again, Carla's not, uh, she's in the house, but she's cooking. She just got home from teaching all the tennis lessons, uh, but she's still very much in, in the thick of things. 
Um, so ATP Finals, we have Djokovic that will start out playing Berrettini at the ATP Finals. Obviously, Djokovic is going to win that, I would assume. Federer playing TM. Toss-up there. I don't think Federer's going to put too much into this tournament. Medvedev versus Sistipas. That's going to be a good match, but I still I don't know how much energy is in the tank uh, or how much they're going to put out because the Australian is knocking on the door. Nadal, Zverev, same thing there. I mean, Nadal say, may, may say, hey, I'm going to let this young whippersnapper Bean pole just beat me. It doesn't matter. I need to rest anyway. So I'm not putting too much weight in, into this ATP Finals, but we'll see what happens. Uh, Davis Cup and Fed Cup upcoming. Uh, Margaret Court, by the way, has been caught up in some drama about she should be revered when she comes to the court. And she said a couple of comments that are um, uh, a dicey set of comments uh, in this day and age. What are your thoughts about that? I'm not going to get into that on this show, but I think this day and age, if we are wanting a royal welcome to a tennis tournament, then we should be royally careful with our comments, Margaret Court. Just saying. If you want to be revered, uh, then act reverently uh, and, and, and don't let your tongue slip. Um, anyway, that's it, guys. I miss Carla. miss all of you. Click subscribe. Uh, click like below. Actually, wait a minute. I don't care if this goes deeper. Let me bring up this Margaret Court thing. So, Margaret Court, as we know, is, 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 is an Australian tennis player. Um, one of the tennis players that Serena Williams is trying to catch uh, in terms of Grand Slam totals. Um, and uh, she made some stink of things saying that, you know, you, 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 and speaking to the Australian Open tournament organizers, yeah, I like coming to your tournament, but unless you treat me as good as you treat Rod Laver, then I don't want to come back. Well, if you want to complain like that, then who needs it? Get lost. Who even cares? Really, who cares about the comment that she made, even though those are worse than her demeanor? You know, you're supposed to be some tennis champion that's got 23, 24, whatever majors it is during an era, which has nothing even uh, commensurate with the current level now, by the way. Yes, you won all of one tournament. You know, and I don't want to get my facts straight because some Margaret Court fan is going to call me out for not having my facts straight, and I'm sitting here with a hobble leg on my bed and haven't moved in eight days. So... All I'd, so let me erase the amount of titles and everything else. Forget about all that. Let me retract my statements. Let's talk about a champion. That's it. Can you imagine um, Michael Jordan going into Bulls Stadium and saying, you know what, Chicago, I'm not going to come back here and visit my people unless these people roll on a red carpet. Whatever. Are you serious? Come on. Just because you don't get a little pat on the butt like someone else may or may not, you're not going to come be one with your people? How does that make any good sense? You sound like a schmuck. And just talking about this stupid stuff, this homophobic stuff or whatever, that's meaningless. Leave people alone. Whatever their choice is in life, let them deal with it. We don't need to hear your mouth. Seriously. A tennis champion? That's just stupid. Okay? Just totally stupid. And, and to bring up something like that... Uh, in the public eye, when you probably know nothing about it except your cynical, one-sided views about everything. I'm not pro this or pro that or pro this guy or pro that girl or pro this or study this and don't study that. If it doesn't involve me, just leave it alone. And then coming from a tennis champion where you're like a champion that represents millions of people, you're not going to come to your tournament unless you get the same spoils as someone else? How childish does that sound? Seriously. I hope Serena busts that record up just because of that so we can just put that in the history books. Let's go, Serena. Let's get down. Anyway, um, in all serious notes, if you're going to be a champion, on camera, off camera, on the playing field, off the playing field, just try to act like a champion, okay? I get it. It might hurt that uh, when you go to your uh, Australian Open that you don't get the tender, loving butt rubbing that Rod Laver may get. You've got a court named after you, Margaret Court Arena. He's got a court named after him, Rod Labor Arena. Okay, that's pretty cool already, right? I don't got a court named after me. But shoot, I, I don't even have a freaking uh, a, a piece of rock in my driveway named after me. Come on, man. And now you're going to talk about, I don't want to come back unless I get revered. Whatever. Spare me. And just spare your political and other uh, radical thoughts. Spare us that as well because we get enough of that on every ad that we turn on, on TV. We don't need to see it from your mouth. Anyway, that's my take on that. Much love to everyone, no matter left, right, up, down, space, earth, underwater, above water. Peace, love, harmony with nature, period. All right? That's it. Click like below. Um, what's up? Let's go, Carl. Let's go. Um, and we'll see you soon. All right?
Take care.